From a really young age, my parents emphasized that education was really important. And always also having this emphasis on not forgetting your roots and where you came from because that's how you stay grounded and realize that there's things outside of just you that are important. I was also raised quite religious, so one of the things I always heard was if you save one life, it's as if you saved all of humanity. And so to have any part to play in that was exciting and I couldn't imagine my life doing anything else. I needed to the push the bounds of what people had done before. You know, following just a straight and narrow path was not for me. I knew that if I wanted to make a difference and make a change, that I would have to really explore different avenues. And so school was always really important. During that time, I got involved with a lot of different things. I debated, so I went to nationals on legislative debate and policy. I served as a youth liaison to the Portage City Council. I wrote for the Kalamazoo Gazette. It was not only about being in research and being in the lab and shadowing, that's important. And that's my calling. I don't want to underestimate that or understate that. But the, that in and of itself, if that was all I pursued, that was not going to do justice to my patients and not do justice to the mission that I had sought since a young age. And I tried to find ways to integrate my love of science and of medicine with my love of journalism and these other things that really impact more people, that go beyond just a single patient-doctor relationship. And then I worked at the White House for a summer working on health policy. See, it was about communication. People who become leaders in these fields actively engage with these opportunities and pursue them and try to really fill that place that just hasn't been filled yet. It requires us to go into these other avenues that are, quite frankly, more effective in changing an individual's perspectives and reinforcing behaviors that are important for their health. You really have to engage a broader audience. And I decided to implement myself and make a change, to make a difference. When I went to England to get my master's in public health, I landed this internship with the BBC. I worked with the show Trust Me, I'm a Doctor. And they put together these fabulous public health messages that really impacted a huge group of people within that country. For the first time, I saw this aspect of media being a vehicle for change and serving as this bigger equalizer. Who are the celebrated heroes of our history? They're the ones that have gone beyond themselves and thought about how to make a better society, make a better humanity, make a better community. And in order to create that community, we have to start by thinking of each and every person as an important member of that community. We have entered an era where a patient armed with the power of Google can present a differential diagnosis to their physician. Where an individual may use their celebrity to impact the medical decisions of millions, and where the public perception of disease may become more important than the disease itself. Today, the practice of research and medicine has expanded from the hallowed halls of our laboratories and our hospitals into the public forum. The mechanics of medical and scientific discourse have shifted, and therefore so too must our approach as physicians and as patients who will function in this novel milieu. Medical knowledge, more than most political, sports, or entertainment news stories, have the potential to drastically alter people's lives for the better. Or in the case of my friend Kermit here, for the worse. But so often, despite the significant public investment in these endeavors, much of the public remains unaware of these advances. A large, uninformed public has major ramifications for patients' ability to engage in their own health.
If the public does not know the daily updates that are occurring in medicine and in science, then how can they be motivated enough to, lead, to hold themselves accountable and their leadership to account for standard or improvements in care? National surveys have revealed that although interest in science, technology and medicine are relatively high, levels of knowledge are far lower. Many people are simply too busy, and those who are interested often don't know where to start. As a student who has worked for both federal health policy and the medical departments of national media outlets, I have experienced firsthand how the search for the elusive expert opinion ends. With the first author of the most recent publication in a particular field, these experts often make the same fatal mistakes. They steep their statements in technical jargon, struggle to distill their key points, and ultimately confuse their audience. And I am not alone in this observation. An international collaboration of experts in the field highlight that simply not enough is being done to close the gap. Some may consider these assertions problematic, arguing that of course, scientists can communicate, as this is integral to academic publishing. However, the world of research mandates our ability to craft words intricately for high-impact journals or a competitive R01 grant. This ad hoc skill learned throughout academic careers uniquely places us to convey our ideas to a community of our colleagues, and in doing so, perhaps allows us to underestimate the complexities of simplifying our message. The mainstream media remains the primary source of scientific information for the American public today. Therefore, publishing in the New York Times should be just as valued as publishing in high-impact journals like Nature. And I am not saying that every physician must become a journalist. Joining professional medical societies that inform both patients and physicians is another route of advocacy and provides additional avenues. And if we truly hope to introduce medicine into the daily global dialogue, a simple, elegant solution would be for research institutions across the world to partner with social media giants to help trend stories that are pertinent to people's health and well-being. The sidebar on Facebook and Twitter can be used so effectively to educate the public about what is the latest, and the greatest in biomedical information, even if most people don't bother to read the entire story. This would allow communicating breakthroughs to transverse their current limitations, creating a dialogue that is consistent and engaging. Physicians have a responsibility to ourselves and to our patients to be informed and to discuss issues as they inevitably arise we are afforded a unique opportunity to open dialogue not only through the patient-provider relationship, but also through media. And there is simply no better time than the present. Thank you.